So I wrote uh, five short plays. Each one is a different genre, a different approach to storytelling, um, but they're all told in this compact form. I don't really write for profit. I'm blessed in that sense that I'm not writing to earn a living. I, I don't know that there are a lot of people that are, even though there's a lot of content on Netflix and Amazon and that. I think, uh, well, I know from various groups that I belong to, that most writers will never see their material performed or, or even read. Uh, so I write for of the entertainment of the reader and the entertainment of the theater goer. Uh, I want folks to be entertained. I want them to come in and, you know, and you know, go through the, the drama and uh, the melancholy or the, the happy moment or the relief of, of tension. And so I'm writing for the audience. I'm not writing for the mass market or for advertisers or anybody like that. So uh, it's very gratifying to see performance and to see folks clap, uh, or to at least to imagine those who have read the books to, uh, you know, to be satisfied that they, they've gone through a, an artistic experience. And um, the proceeds are all going to, whatever proceeds there are, will go to St. Jude's Children's Hospital I would hope folks buy it and uh, buy it so that we'll go out to St. Jude's. It's a wonderful charity. Hello, my name is uh, Tony Barone. I'm going to be talking about my new book. It's a collection of short plays. Uh, so I hope you watch the video. And the first uh, story is The Charitable Heart is the title. It was actually based on an O. Henry short story. Uh, and uh, it's about a fellow who is down and out, so to speak. He's broke, he's jobless, and it's Christmas time, and he has no money to, to buy his, his wife a Christmas present. Uh, he meets uh, an old parent drunk who he sits with on a bench, and the, the drunk reveals that he had once been a young man himself and had been in a similar situation. Uh, he had purchased his wife a barrette uh, that he gave her for Christmas and she was, she was very happy. And he, he speaks about their, their young married life. And for example, that he had no money, but his wife decorated a little Christmas tree with socks and, and, uh, and an aluminum top to the tree. Uh, so uh, the, the drunk at the end of this story uh, reveals that his wife had cut her hair. So the, the barrette is kind of unnecessary. His hair wasn't there, she had, but she had cut her hair so that she could sell the hair and buy him a gift for Christmas. So it's a, a sweet play, I would say. It's about love, it's a love story. It's a love story of the old drunk. Uh, it's also a love story of the young man and his wife. Uh, and, and it's about the current time that, that people are out of work. Those that are out of work, that are unfortunate to be out of work uh, are having to deal with uh, you know, needs that, that are very personal. The second story in the book is um, Whispers. Whispers uh, is a story of um, gossipers in a retirement home in Amsterdam. It happens, it was based actually on, I had gone to Amsterdam and the, uh, what happened was that I got off a train and I, instead of making a right, I made a left and I wound up in the red light district in Amsterdam. That was the basis for this story. Uh, the gossipers are, are uh, two ladies sitting on one end of the room and two ladies in the other end of the room. The other end of the room is this famous ballerina, Russian ballerina, who laments that she's no longer a ballerina. And I uh, was convinced that the ladies on the other end are whispering about her. In fact, they are. 
Uh, one of them is jealous and thinks that she's, the ballerina is haughty and so on. Uh, that story uh, resolves, uh, I have to tell you the ending of all these stories, uh, but there is a, a twist when a, a, a distinguished aristocrat comes to visit the famous ballerina and happens that he had known one of the two uh, gossipers uh, and he had met her in the red light district. So it's a comedy, uh, but it's not a, you know, a back slapping kind of comedy. Uh, it's about aging. It's the, the famous ballerina, you know, laments the loss of her, you know, famous status. Uh, when people would come and visit her and send her flowers. No one remembers her anymore. The third story in the book is, um, it's kind of a spoof. It's based on the Conan Doyle character, Sherlock Holmes, favorite character of mine. I love detective plays in movies and, and stories and books. But in this story, Sherlock Holmes is, has gotten everything wrong. And um, it's a, kind of a reflection of the fact that at some point, you start to, to lose some of those strengths and attributes that you had at one time. Here's the famous detective, uh, but the famous detective in this story is getting everything wrong. Um, uh, and Watson is the character that is a kind of his foil. Uh, at the end, even though he's gotten everything wrong uh, in the case is uh, the woman who's come uh, who's wanted to hire him as a to, to keep track of her husband. Uh, but so in the end of the, uh, the story, it turns out that uh, Sherlock doesn't really recognize that he's, he's lost his ability to solve cases on just tiny bits of information. So it's, uh, it's just my love of Sherlock, actually. As I say, these stories are, are compact. From the first act to the third act, 12 minutes have, have passed. So a lot happens. The next story is the one actually that folks have really liked a lot. In fact, it's going to be produced, uh, I think it's next month, by a group called Twilight Productions. It's, uh, it's called War Stories. Uh, War Stories is about a young man and his father, actually. The, uh, the young man is uh, enlisting uh, in the in the military, uh, he's, he's really not understanding what's involved in the military and in combat and warfare. Uh, his father is delighted the son is doing this. This is a patriotic thing that the son is doing. The mom isn't as happy, but the father is, explains that she really doesn't understand what it means to be a man and what it means to be a patriot. So in, in comes Uncle Sam, who is going to be driving the boy down to the recruitment office. Uncle Sam uh, is a combat veteran and relates the story uh, because the young boy asked, had, had you seen action? And so uh, Uncle Sam relates the horrendous experiences that he had encountered in Vietnam, actually. And um, it's very graphic, very bloody, very authentic. And uh, the boy realizes that he would rather go to college and do some ROTC before he decides to go off to war. So the story resolves really with the mother thanking Uncle Sam for coming. In other words, none of these things are explicit. The explicit message is thanks for coming and, and telling my son what warfare is all about. Um, I, I think it's inspired by going, my going to the movies and seeing you know, ads uh, from the military you know, come and jump out of airplanes and do all these heroic things without showing the other side 
the other side are the limbless soldiers and the soldiers without a face and the brain spilling out onto the battlefield. Uh, so I, I thought that it would be a good idea to show both sides. And then, you know, if you want to go ahead and, and uh, enlist and be a soldier, well, you know, it's necessary because Uncle Sam needs you. So the, the last story in the collection is Blackwell's Island. And th this was written specifically for Halloween, actually. And it's based on the life of the true, true life character, true life person, Nellie Bly, who was, I think, the first investigative reporter, period. And uh, she, she went uh, undercover to Blackwell's Island, uh, which was an insane asylum in New York City, uh, to report on the horrors of Blackwell's Island. Well, she doesn't come back. So her boyfriend then follows her and finds himself in a straitjacket uh, about to have uh, his brain electri you know, uh, shocked. So as I say, it's a horror story and I think a Edgar Allan Poe kind of story, at least that's what it's been compared to. Uh, Whispers is more a Guy de Maupassant kind of story. So each one is a different genre, a different approach to storytelling, uh, but they're all told in this compact form. Well, my name is Tony Barone. I hope you enjoyed uh, our talk. Uh, the name of the book is Simple Title, Five Short Plays. Uh, it's out on Amazon. I hope you buy it. There's a Kindle and a hard cover version. I hope you read it. I hope you like it. I hope you decide to produce and perform it. And thank you for listening.